Seems like Diddy is on his own now. All the people he was once friends with are turning their backs on him, and they're doing it for all the right reasons. Who doesn't already know the explosive scandals and legal troubles that Diddy has been going through? Unless you're living under a rock. Whatever's happening, God's dealing with it. And that's the best thing to say, but I, you know, it is very unfortunate that things in this business are always, you know, being exposed in certain ways, and I think things could be done differently, but I think this is a matter for God to just continue dealing with how he's dealing with it. So you think, like, you know, stuff is basically the, the the internet becomes, you know, the judge and the jury before even seeing a court, right? Is that kind of like the idea again, you know? I mean, I, I can't really speak in it, but I think when you have platforms like this, you know, this is the year of truth at the end of the day. Things are going to be exposed, you know, yeah. but how is exposed, to whom is exposed from, those things, I mean, everyone's going to have to answer for what's, what we do on this earth, put it that right, much, right? right? We all have issues, problems, skeletons, right, and then right. we also have rewards and achievements and everything of that nature, but for the, for the most part, I just believe that when God is dealing with you, you got to let the process flow. And at this moment, you know, all I can do is say, you know, you know, I hope things work out for all the, for, for everybody in so many words, you know what I mean? It's, it's a God's plan. I think we just gotta allow this, this process to just play itself out. It seems that Diddy needs more than friendly advice for someone who's already been to prison because it is not looking too good for him. A lot of famous figures have cut ties with the music mogul for the ongoing legal troubles he's been going through. There are some who are even taking to their social media platforms, exposing his evil deeds and all the dark things that happen beyond the vision of the public eye. Everybody been talking about the puppy situation. First, I'd like to pray for his family, his daughters and his sons, you know, his kids, basically. That's never a good sign for nobody to cheer about when it comes to kids or, you know what I mean, being handcuffed. It's a bad day for hip-hop, for the culture, for black people, because when one looks bad, we all look bad. Because that's, that's definitely not nothing to cheer about. But I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participating in? So, you know they're going to get you if they can starting with Rodney Jones. The music producer Jones filed his $30 million lawsuit against Diddy on February 26, making a number of accusations against Combs, including sexual misconduct and grooming. Jones has also accused Combs of participating in sex trafficking activity. It is also alleged in the lawsuit that Combs had employees like maids and butlers carry fanny packs to supply cocaine. The music producer said he lived with Diddy for almost a year to work on the project, and it was during that time he witnessed the alleged criminal activity and was the victim of threats. Attorneys for comms have strongly denied the allegations, previously telling Newsweek, we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Hello everyone, um, until further notice I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that um, for security reasons. My family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just want to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. 
Love. LeBron James has been one of the most front-facing celebrities in the sports hip-hop crossover arena, with successful side projects like his The Shop talk show. Throughout the years, he has been seen partying with Diddy at exclusive Hollywood events and singing along to his hits. However, the athlete has decided to continue his streak of avoiding off-court negativity as he chose to unfollow Diddy on Instagram earlier this week. The pressure to dissociate himself with Diddy may have been intensified after fans recently pulled up an old clip of LeBron co-signing how legendary Diddy's parties were. Ain't no party like a Diddy party, Bron could be heard saying in the video. It looks like he won't be attending any more from now on. Oh, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so... Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. You know what yeah. Although a handful of celebrities waited until after the Hotel Assault video was released to unfollow Diddy, Patrick Mahomes made the move to do so over a month ago. The Kansas City Chiefs star removed himself from Diddy's follower list after the latter's home were raided in March 2024. Taking it a step further, the Daily Mail noticed the quarterback went back and deleted a handful of old tweets that mentioned his P. Diddy stage name. In that message, Mahomes wished former user Pat Day 25, seemingly one of his friends, a happy birthday while referring to him as P. Diddy. The stage name Combs went by from 2001 04. The other came in February 2014 on the day of that year's NBA All Star Game in New Orleans, where Diddy performed alongside the likes of Snoop Dogg, Pharrell, Booster Rhymes, and Nelly. Mahomes, a freshman for Texas. Tech at the time wrote, Yeah, P. Diddy. The story is making it clear he doesn't want to be associated with Diddy as of now on and is making sure every lane is covered. RB Star's interview with Howard Stern has resurfaced at his former mentor, Diddy's home, were raided by Homeland Security. Diddy, 54, is widely credited with the discovery and cultivation of artists such as Usher, who rose to fame in the mid 90s before achieving wider success with hit singles such as Yeah and Confessions Part 2. Diddy and Usher met after the R&B singer signed a record deal with La Raid, who reportedly sent him to live with Diddy in New York for a year. Years later, when Usher was promoting his 2016 film Hands of Stone, he appeared on the Howard Stern Show, where he was also questioned about his experiences at Diddy's home. Describing it as wild, Usher said he witnessed some weird things and emphasized that this was the 90s, but when asked if he'd send his kids to the Puffy Mansion, he immediately said no. moved to New York City, and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, uh, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was crazy. tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. <laughs> What I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jody C, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what kind, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Throughout the entire ordeal, many people have been interested in young Miami stance. The city girl has been romantically linked to the music executive since June of 2022 and has remained relatively tight-lipped since the sexual assault allegations were filed. In terms of public appearances, the pair showed up hand-in-hand -hand at the 2023 Met Gala, 2022 Bad Awards, and countless other events. The former Revolt chairman even gave Young Miami her own talk show, Carisha Please, Unrevolt. The two artists also collaborated on their Act Bad, 
single in May 2023. Miami has periodically made cryptic statements on her social media over the last few months, like the time she posted, y'all be going for anything, an ex. Her name was then in many headlines when a story surfaced about her allegedly transporting pink cocaine for the mogul. However, as of this week, the twerk later rapper officially unfollowed her 2022-2024 bow on Instagram, a move that shocked a lot of people considering their very recent relationship. 50 Cent has not stopped talking about Diddy during his trial and since the allegations became mainstream. However, 50 has been raising the alarm bells about Diddy for years, months before the allegations broke. 50 Cent was recorded bashing Diddy's infamous parties at an October 2023 concert. The In The Club rapper alleged that Diddy knew who took out Notorious Big, insinuating that Diddy was involved with some very bad people. Nowadays, 50 Cent is much more straight up with his feelings about P. Diddy, as he's a vocal supporter of the allegations against him. All y'all is dead looking at this That's why I don't be going to the puffy parties. Uh-uh. They can hug you from the front and the back at the same time. What the fuck you talking about? Uh, I mean, look, if you're into that, you're into that, I'm fine with it. To each his own. I'm just saying this shit, my motherfucker, kind of party. I'm like, it's, it's uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girls' bathroom. When shit like that is going on. Eminem is also someone who rubbed Diddy the wrong way. And just like 50 Cent, Eminem alleged that Diddy was involved in some violent activities. In fact, Eminem suggested that Diddy knew quite a bit about what happened to Tupac with his hit Kill Shot. The day you put out a hit, the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got Pac killed. In reference to the infamous 1996 drive-by shooting drive in which the legendary rapper was murdered, Keith D confesses to being hired by P. Diddy to kill Tupac. The Valuetainment Post said, Tupac Shakur's murderer Keith D confessed that hip-hop mogul P. Diddy hired him to kill Tupac for $1 million in a recent police interrogation. O'Day has been making news in the light of Diddy's scandal. In fact, she's been incredibly vocal about her experience working with him. However, O'Day actually revealed some truly disturbing facts about Diddy back in 2019. According to an interview with Variety, O'Day detailed her negative experience with Diddy on the set of 2005's Making the Band, a reality TV show that he oversaw. The interview preceded the allegations against Diddy, but even then O'Day claimed that he treated women in problematic ways. In her interview with Variety, O'Day continued by saying that P. Diddy was very difficult to work with as he was a perfectionist. While O'Day was a contestant personality on the reality show, she found Diddy to be overly critical, including of her appearance. Everything, including how her toenails looked, was of interest to him. O'Day admitted that she and her fellow co-star were terrified of Diddy, as they experienced his intensity and sexist remarks. O'Day's mother was the one who ultimately told her to suck it up and work through it. While O'Day doesn't regret her time on making the band, she did warn the world of Diddy years before the mainstream found out what he could be like. Obi O'Day posted, Cassie settles lawsuit accusing Sean Combs of rape and abuse. And she posted another story saying, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Sean Diddy comes. With the song of her choice, Jail by Kanye West. Was the Cassie lawsuit a surprise to you? Or did you know that was coming? I knew something was coming because um, it was too much of a stretch for me to believe that... I knew something was coming when I was given the publishing deal. I knew after my attorney looked into it and saw that we weren't really getting our publishing back from back when we actually sold as many records as we did, which would financially change all of our lives. And we did write on songs, and so we would get a nice chunk of money. Mm. Um, I saw all the headlines about Diddy's being benevolent and giving all of his blessed artists their publishing back because it's, you know, notoriously known throughout time that he he screws his artists over, mm -hmm. allegedly. So when that came to me and then my attorney confirmed, uh, 
it's not really him, it's Sony, and now they own your catalog. And Cassandra Ventura's name is everywhere due to both her lawsuit against former boyfriend Diddy, but also the recent release of the surveillance footage that showed him beating her. But Wendy Williams sounded the alarm on their relationship years earlier. In 2015, Williams fueled a feud with Diddy when she slammed Diddy for treating Cassie Ventura like a possession. Not only did Wendy Williams warn the public of Diddy's bad behavior regarding how he handles revenge, but she also raised the alarm bells about his treatment of Cassie Ventura years before it went public. Sounds like Diddy is in some boiling water now, and there is no one to advocate for him. Yet, he still denies everything that has been coming out against him. The guy's pretty stubborn if you ask me. I don't see the end of things, but I can't wait to see what doom awaits him.